everybody, this is Tolki for the first unlimited deck tech on my channel. Today, we'll be talking about OTK One Turn Kill Roach, a very strong forest craft deck in Unlimited. This is a deck I played until Grandmaster and I had about a 70% win rate with it. I also played it again today to record a few matches for this video and I went 13 and one. I really feel like this is one, if not the best deck in Unlimited at the moment and it's very fun it has lots of options, lots of gameplay decisions, as well as being very powerful. The difficult part though is that it's really hard to master. Personally, I think it's the hardest deck to play perfectly in all of Shadowverse. And it's not because of the combo turns, because that's actually the easy part. I would say it takes you about a hundred games to start being decent with this deck, which is much more than other decks in Shadowverse. OTK Roach has existed pretty much since the beginning of Shadowverse. It has been nerfed many, many, many times, and it's still tier 1, which is a testament to how broken it is. Let's start by taking a look at the deck list. There are other possible builds of OTK Roach, but this one is the best performing historically. As you can see, a lot of cards overlap with more controlling build of Forestcraft. You have Wood of Brambles, Cassiopeia, Crystallia Erin, Urban Barrage, and that's no mistake. As we will see in the strategy part, the important thing about OTK Roach is that it's a control deck before being a combo deck. Most decks that can kill you in one turn are actually control decks because what they want to do is get the game to the point where they can kill you in one turn. OTK Roach is the same. It will very rarely kill before turn 6 or 7 and plays very strong mid-range cards to get to that point. So think of it as a control deck with a combo finish instead of just a combo deck. The flex slots are the interaction because you have to adapt it to the metagame. This is Lilac, Cassiopeia, Will of the Forest, Angelic Snipe, and even Sylvan Justice. You have to play the removal that is good against the top decks at the moment. Since Shadowcraft Reanimate is currently a very strong deck, I would advise playing more Lilac. And if it gets nerfed, then you can switch to Angelic Snipe to fight the aggro decks and be able to empty out your hand faster. It was very hard for me to find key cards of the deck. Because the deck is made of so many moving pieces, there is not really one card that stands out as the card that makes the deck work. But the deck is called OTK Roach, and it would be dishonest to say Roach is not the centerpiece of the deck. Roach is your kill condition, and you play 9 copies of it thanks to Mini Goblin Mage and Fina. Roach is inherently a broken card. It's the only 2 mana card in Shadowverse that can deal up to 8 or 9 damage with Storm. And to be entirely transparent, it's my favorite card in the game. It's why I printed it and put it behind me. But it's broken, there's nothing else to say about it. It's just way too strong for Shadowverse. The second key card is another Roach. It's Fortune Hunter Fina. While it looks a bit innocuous by itself, it gives you both a zero mana spell and a Renace Roach. Those are the two things you need to combo off. Usually, you will need two zero mana spell and two Roaches, and Evolving Fina gives you both at once. Even though you will win games where you don't draw Fina, Drawing Fina makes things much easier. She really supercharges the deck. Finally, let's talk about Ancient Elf. It looks pretty harmless, but as we will see later, it's the card that allows OTK Roach to play multiple game plans. It's great against aggro as an early ward that will buy you a lot of time. It's great against slower decks because a draw of Fairy Circle, Fairy Fairy into Ancient Elf can deal your opponent up to 10 damage before they can stabilize. And it's also great in mid-range matchups as it's able to bounce back to your hand cards with strong fanfare effect while also allowing you to commit one Roach for 2 or 3 damage before getting it back to your hand and setting up a combo for the next turn. Ancient Elf isn't that flashy, but it does everything at once. It plays well with every facet of the deck and gives you another axis of attack. This time I'll go a little bit for a different approach for this section of the deck tech. I'll be showing the key cards again and putting some cards in multiple groups. I think it's more important to understand the clusters of cards that form the deck. The first cluster are the nine roaches. You have Rhinoceros Roach itself, the normal Goblin Mage at 3 mana to tutor for it, and the Fortune Hunter Fina. This package, as shown by the fact that two of those cards were in the key cards, is what makes the deck tick. Playing Goblin Mage means you cannot play two mana followers outside of Roach, but it's a constraint you're willing to accept because of its power level. 
The second cluster are the Wisps and the Fairy Makers. Wisps are huge combo enablers, and I don't really know why they started printing that recently. The printing of Flower of Fairies in particular was an incredible buff to the deck. Meanwhile, the Fairy Makers help you have more 1 mana spells, have a bigger hand for effects like Cassiopeia, and also allows you to get on the board early while being unable to play followers that cost 2 or less. Fairy Circle in particular was very close in making it to the key cards of the deck. Then we have Interaction and Removal. Pretty much all the cards here are flex slots. Outside of Urban Barrage, which is uh, great as it's also a combo enabler. Wheel of the Forest and Cassiopeia are the least likely to go away because they really answer a wide variety of threats while adding another dimension to the deck. Since you want to be combo killing people, they will try to kill you fast and present a wide board and this is where Wheel of the Forest and Cassiopeia can really punish them hard. Regarding Lilac, since people really love reanimating Zeus at the moment, I feel like she's earned her spot. But for example, if a new strong removal spell for Forestcraft appears in the future, it will likely make its way to OTK Roach. This section, the bad the bounce, bounce, bounce spells. They're central pieces of your combo turn. In particular, Urban Barrage and Nature Guidance can count as three spells for one mana if you have a Wisp. Ancient Elf will rarely be used during the combo turns, but she's very strong as a way to poke some damage with a roach and then get it back to your hand. Finally, and I feel like this deserves its own slide, we have the mid-range plan elements. As I told you, OTK Roach is a control deck with a combo finish, but as we'll see in the strategy section, it can also play a very strong mid-range plan and sometimes even play an aggro plan. And when you're in the control or the mid-range role, having cards like Crystallia Erin, as well as Ancient Elf and Cassiopeia, really lets you get a lot of value. Erin, in particular, shines in mid-range mirrors or against any aggro deck. Okay, so now let's get into the hard part, the strategy of OTK Roach. This will likely be the hardest video I make for a long time. So prepare your ears, focus, and I hope you'll be able to become a great OTK player. The overall strategy of the deck is to set yourself up to a combo kill. This means you need to survive until you can combo off, you need to get enough damage through so you can kill them with your combo, and you also need to keep the cards necessary to go off. So while the goal sounds easy, it encompasses a way broader spectrum of decisions. But overall, you will be winning most of your games between turn 6 and 9, which means you should be focusing on surviving until then while trying to craft the perfect hand to combo off. But the real strength of OTK Roach is that it can play multiple roles during a game. Depending on the matchup, depending on the drove of both players, OTK Roach can be the aggressor, it can be the control deck, or it can just play a mid-range plane until it can combo off. This is what makes the deck so hard to play, because you have to identify your role every single turn, to adapt to the game and to what your opponent is playing, and you cannot rely on cookie cutter decisions. Sometimes it will be correct to spew off value to set yourself up for a faster combo kill. Sometimes it's more important to be patient and to be very conservative with the resources you have. Let's take a look at a few examples. Against Runecraft Dimension Shift, you will likely be the aggressor for most of the game. They have a more reliable turn 7 combo than you do, because you have to play creatures to pressure them, and they can therefore use their removal spells, while you can be stuck with Sylvan Justice, Cassiopeia, Chrysalia Erin, or Wheel of the Forest in hand. So, since they can have a faster kill than you, you have to take them by storm, and you have to play aggressively. At the opposite of the spectrum, you have Aggro Sword. In this matchup, you are 100% a control deck. If your opponent goes turn 1 Quick Blader, don't be scared to play Roach turn 2 just to trade with the creature. Doesn't look pretty, but if it's your only way to get rid of it on turn 2, it might be the correct play. Against Aggro decks, as long as you can go late, you will find a way to win. In these matchups, don't be scared to play your Wisps as a 0 mana 1 1. Don't be scared to play the Goblin Mage you get from Fina to get a 2 2 on the board. Even if you have a combo finish, sometimes it's correct to not play to it. It's really, really important to understand that this deck can play a multitude of roles. You are not a combo deck. You're a mid range deck with a combo finish, which sometimes can play the aggressor role, the defensive role, or even just a normal mid range battle. Speaking of the deck matchups, the bad matchups are the decks where your interaction doesn't line up well. For example, Reanimate Shadowcraft, being able to cheat out huge fatties really fast, is not a good matchup. Your mid range cards like Will of the Forest and Cassiopeia, being unable to interact with it as well as being just too slow, 
make it so it's a really rough matchup. On the other side, the good matchups are the mid-range decks and the deck with which you are able to interact well. Tenko Havencraft deck, mid-sword decks, and any other random mid-range decks are bad against you. People might think the opposite. I've heard people think mid Swordcraft was favored against OTK Roach, but it's definitely mistaken. OTK Roach plays a very strong mid-range plan as well, but threatens the combo kill and forces the opponent to make inefficient plays. Starting from now, Mulligans will also have their own section in my deck decks. Mulliganing properly is a key aspect of becoming better at Shadowverse. With OTK Roach, the cards you want to see in your opening hand are cards that allow you to interact early or set yourself up for the combo. This means, against small creature decks, you want to be mulliganing for Sylvan Justice. Against bigger decks, you want to be mulliganing for Lilac. And you should just strive to get the interaction you need early in the matchup. The other type of cards you are happy to see in your opening hand are just cards you can cast early. This is Fairy Circle, Flower of Fairies, Goblin Mage, and Ancient Elf. In the end, it's a little bit like every other deck. You want to be mulliganing to have good early plays and transition into the mid game without being too far behind. The big question is whether or not you should mulligan Roach. I feel like I could make a whole video just about that. But as a rule of thumb, I would advise to mulligan Roach most of the time because you play 9 copies of it. And you usually only need 2 copies for your kills. Now let's talk a little bit about the gameplay intricacies of the deck. My number one advice for getting better with OTK Roach is to count the damage you will be able to output on the next turn at all time. Because if you do that, you won't have to start from scratch every single turn, you won't run out of time, and you will be able to optimize your decisions to get to the point where you can kill your opponent. I think you need to know how much damage you can output before you draw your card for the turn. When you're thinking about your damage output and you're trying to count how much damage you can deal, you have three things you need to think about. The first is your play points count. If you want to play three roaches in the combo, you will need six mana just for this. And if you have only two roaches in hand and you need to bounce, this costs you seven mana. The remaining mana is what you can do before going for the killing sequence. So be very wary of the number of play points you have and how much you will need to use to go for the combo. The second is of course the card count. So how many cards you can play before you play your first roach. And then finally, there is a question of board slots. Wisps disappearing after being bounced help a lot, but if you have to use fairies and goblin mages to combo off, you have to be very wary of the board slots. Sometimes you also have to sacrifice some followers you have on the board to free up a board slot to be able to combo off. So don't forget to take that into account. There are really lots of ways to combo off and it's impossible to cover them here. In game you just have to count the damage and to pay attention to it. You don't need a PhD to know how much damage you will output, but you need to be focused and you need to have experience with the deck. But it's so fun. I, I really love it personally. I really love counting the damage and realizing, hey, I can deal 17 here and just go for it. Regarding gameplay, another very important note is that it's way easier to kill an opponent at 15 than it is to kill an opponent at 20. So as much as you can, you should be trying to get some damage in here and there. Going from 20 to 15 usually means you can play up to two spells fewer to kill them. Another very important point is that you have to be cautious with your bounces. You only have 6 1 mana bounce spells and they're really crucial in going off. This matters a lot in the early stages of the game where you should, if at all possible, not use Urban Barrage. You really want to use it for the maximum value coupled with a Rhinos Roach or a Wisp. Finally, let's talk about a few advanced plays that I didn't even get to do today. The first thing is to think about your zero mana spells. When I say think about them, it means don't unnecessarily keep them in your hand for a combo turn when you're in a match where you won't need to combo them out. Even though 95% of the time you should be keeping them in your hand for the combo turn, there are times where it's correct to play them, and Wisps in particular should usually be played instead of being handlocked. Another advanced play is non-lethal or trading roaches, and I mean non-lethal roaches without bouncing them back to your hand. It's pretty rare that it is the right play, but you have to be aware that it is an option. You can usually afford to lose one roach early and still combo kill later with two roaches and a bounce. 
So this is it for this OTK Roots deck tech. In particular, I would like to thank Essia, the winner of the latest Unlimited Shadowverse to open in Europe, for proofreading the show notes and helping me make sure I understood the deck well. Sorry for the length of the video. I feel like I could even have done a video twice as long because there's so much to say about the deck. But I'll stop here. So thank you once again. And if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. The best way to help me is to get the word out so I can continue making content on Shadowverse. I'll be coming back tomorrow with another Shadowverse video. So have a good day and see you tomorrow.